There we go. All right. So first of all, thank you so much for inviting me to be here. I'm so delighted and honored to be a part of this group and inspired after everything that's been said today. And I feel like, Ileana, you invited me here today because I am the case study. <laughs> I am the case study of plain small, uh, wanting to hide. It's better to be, you know, not to be quiet, work hard, not be seen and heard. And so I have some things that I definitely want to share with you today about my own journey. And when I started thinking about what I wanted to share, I want to talk to you about our dreams don't have an expiration date. And you start looking like me. <laughs> you start thinking, well, maybe my time has passed. I have a couple of things to say on that. Our age doesn't determine our destiny. It's just a number. And don't let anyone ever tell you that you're too old to do anything. And don't you dare believe them. So my mama spent most of her life in poor health, and she was my role model for embracing each decade with gratitude and grace. And when she hit 80, she was so excited to make it that long. So a little bit more about me. For most of my the last 20 years, I've worked in Silicon Valley and tech. And when Frank was talking earlier about being stuck in the middle, that's definitely was me as a sales manager. But while I was there and while I was working, I always, for a long time, 15 years, had a dream. And I had a dream to start a family blog about family recipes. I grew up on a farm and my mom and my bolita and my tias and my primas, amazing cooks. And some of my best times of my life were spent in their kitchens cooking with them. And I wanted to be able to share those recipes with others. But I was scared. I didn't want to... I was terrified of starting my own business. I was already somewhat successful. Why did I need more? And besides, as I was getting older, people my age don't start their own businesses. And oh, and they don't go on social media and put themselves out there in front of the camera. But anyway, after my mother passed away, I finally decided to launch my blog, my side hustle called Molly Mama. And it's been much harder than I could have imagined. It's grown slower than I planned, but I've met so many remarkable people that are passionate and I literally learn something every day. And it's brought me so much joy and enriched my life in ways I never imagined. And a few months ago, I received a phone call that has changed my life and helped me to realize one of the biggest dreams ever. A casting agent invited me to audition for a top rated popular national TV reality cooking show. I've always said no to these previous invitations. Just eight months earlier, I had turned down PBS. My reasoning for declining was that I was concerned that the competition's parameters, the short cooking times, the limited ingredients would cause me to dishonor my mama's and my abuelita's and my tia's Mexican recipes. In addition, my brand isn't about competition. It's about cooking and everybody, Mexican, Irish, Italian, Chinese, absolutely everyone is welcome to learn my family's recipes. So a reality cooking TV show was off brand. But this specific phone call was literally two days after my second heart surgery. I was under the influence of a large quantity of prescription medication, and I said yes to this casting call. A few days later, I was on a Zoom call with a casting agent, and I was still heavily medicated, and I had so much fun sharing the stories of my love of cooking with my mama and my tias. A day later, their legal department reached out and asked me to sign waivers, and I panicked. What had I done? When I shared my concerns about being selected with my husband, he told me that I had to accept their invitation because it was a great way to grow my brand and who knew what doors it might open for me. My best friend also shared his sentiments. But even though they made sound arguments, 
I emailed the casting team the following night and told them that the timing wasn't right. It had nothing to do with my health. I was already feeling so much better. I knew my doctor would release me by my filming dates. The truth was I was terrified. I had so many scenarios going through my head of all the mishaps that awaited me. What if I burnt something? What if I cut myself? What if everybody hated my food? Oh, no, no, no. This was way too risky for me. But getting out of it wasn't easy. The following day, one of the show's producers called me and she spent 45 minutes with me addressing all of my concerns. She's way better at sales than me and she talked me into it and I said yes. A few weeks later, I flew to the set for filming and it was one of the best experiences of my life. Everyone I interacted with, from the drivers to catering, other contestants and celebrities were so incredibly kind and I had a blast. The ever, end of every filming segment, my face actually hurt from smiling. More importantly, it helped me to realize one of my biggest dreams. My brand, my book, my about to be my second book, my blog is all focused on stories of women in my family who sacrificed so much for us. And I was able to share their stories on national TV, how they made us delicious food and put their love into every recipe. I even shared the story of how my abuelita illegally immigrated to California, walking across one of the borders, carrying her beloved mocajete in her single suitcase. A mocajete that I use every day and I know possesses culinary magic. The show's culinary team even ordered me mocajetes and I was able to cook with them. Talking about these beloved women, sharing their stories, how hard they worked, my love and respect for my Mexican culture, immigrants, and how grateful I am to my ancestors for the life that, and the opportunities that I've been given. I don't have words to accurately express how much joy it gave me to share their stories, share the stories of my personal heroes. The other th surprising thing about my show experience was that there was about a hundred cameras on the set and they were following our every move and I wasn't nervous. The cooking was terribly stressful, the interacting with camera operators, celebrities, and other contestants was delightful. I was able to speak clearly, to be articulate, to have fun, and to be present. And I realized that for the last seven years, I've been telling myself, I have this little side hustle with a YouTube channel with a half million views and podcasts with about 50,000 da downloads. It's impossible to become a mega influencer. And I'm managing to break even on my expenses. I've met so many amazing people and that's enough. But what I realized when I was there on that set was that my little business has been preparing me for my television debut, getting me comfortable in front of the camera and public speaking. So unfortunately, I cannot share the details today of the show due to my agreement with the network that will be, be airing in early November. And I'll post all the details to my website, to social media a few days before it airs. So please follow me and I'd love to have you watch. And I don't know how my next chapter will unfold, but will include me saying yes more and not letting my fear drive my decisions and constantly living by what those brave, courageous women in my family taught me. I que tener esperanza, you must have hope. I que tener fa, you must have faith. Y hay que creer, you must believe. I don't know who needed to hear this today, but I don't think any dream that you have tucked away in your heart and keeps reminding you that it is still there should be ignored. Give yourself permission and breathe life into your dream. And who knows where it will take you, who you will meet 
and who you will impact. Believe, have hope, have faith, and go get it. Si se puede. Thank you so much. It's been an honor to share my story with you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Diana, for your story. Uh, it's just inspiring. It's insightful. Uh, there's so many uh, comments on the chat. And we'll be on the lookout for the program and for what's to come about Mole Mama, because I know that it's just amazing, everything that you're building. And United Latinas will be there along the way, along your side, encouraging to really make this something big. Because You've heard it before, we're all here going to become multimillionaires, right? And it starts today, like those other days of I can't make it, I'm good, I'm not good enough, like those are over, right? Imposter syndrome, out the door. So thank you so much, Diana, for, for sharing your story with us and good luck with everything that is coming. Thank you. And now I would like to invite